Yeah. I'm really nervous because there is a lot of people t- bashing me and just telling me I need to be put under the jail and all that. Yeah, well, you can't worry about what they're going to say because they're going to talk regardless. But again, I'm not here to incriminate you. I'm not here to judge you. Just to let you get your story out because a lot of folks are saying a lot of controversial things. So you can just kind of answer a few questions. If you don't feel comfortable answering something, just say, you know, I think I'm going to pass on that uh, question, Kelly, because this is a sensitive issue. And we'll move on to the next question, okay? Okay. Okay, with me on the telephone today, we have uh, Ms. Stone. She is the mother of the 12-year-old young girl who recently had a uh, baby by her ex-boyfriend who was 29 years old out of Spartanburg County. And I just want to thank you first and foremost for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak with you today. And we are here to protect your identity, so we do not want to mention your daughter's name during this interview, uh, nor will we mention your first name. Okay, ma'am? Okay. Of course, you know, this story broke on WSPA News Channel 7 yesterday, and a lot of folks have had a lot of controversial things to say about this situation. And before we get started, I just want to extend my condolences and my empathy to you and your daughter, because regardless of what happened, how it happened, how long it happened, at the end of the day, I don't care what anybody says, it was wrong. This man was 29 years old, and he was also your ex-boyfriend, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How long did you all date? Um, we dated for three years that I grew up with him as a kid and went to school with him. Uh-huh. So I I knew him and his family for, uh, I'm 30, so I would say at least since I was 10, 12 years old. Okay. So you've known him and how, and you said you're 30 now, so you've known him over 18 I, years. Yes, ma'am. Your daughter had the baby back in May. How old is the baby now? Four months old? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, did you all give the baby up for adoption or are you all keeping the baby? No, ma'am. We kept the baby. Okay. All right. Now, has his family uh, had any involvement with the baby since the baby was born? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, why did it take so long for these DNA tests to come back? I mean, that's like four months. Is that standard? Uh, uh, By what I was told, it's standard. Um, I had to patiently sit back and wait. Um, trust me, I spent endless days, nights on the telephone trying to get answers, trying to push the issue. And because of legal purposes, they had to do it that way. They couldn't charge him until they had the DNA. So did Derek know that he was the father the whole time that your daughter was pregnant? I have no clue. I, I honestly can't answer that. He's the one that can answer that question. According to reports, it's being said that he started having sex with your daughter at the age of 10. Is that accurate? No, ma'am. Um, it started from what my child has told me. It started when she was 11 at the end of sixth grade. And it went on until I found out what was going on. And when I found out, I did what I had to do, got rid of him. And that's when everybody got involved with uh, me and my child. So when you found out that she was having sex with your ex-boyfriend, do you know if it was consensual? I mean, at the end of the day, statutory rape is statutory rape. But do you know, was he forcing himself on her or was it consensual? Do you know that part? No, (laughs) ma'am. Everything is still fresh. Right. So so when you found out, was she already pregnant? Yes, ma'am. I didn't find out she was pregnant until in February and she was already like six months along. She... My child was a, a skinny child. Mm-hmm. She she didn't start showing signs of anything until that further date. She was what, approximately 24, 26 weeks when you found out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you know what? As a, a, a mother who was a teenage mother myself, yes, I was pregnant at 16, and um, I was on the slimmer side. And, yes, you're right. I didn't start showing until I was approximately seven months. And um, once you start showing, sometimes it's it's a bit late to terminate if that's something that somebody would want to do. Um, so that wasn't even an option once you found out, correct? No, ma'am. I don't believe in none of that, period. No matter the circumstances. No, ma'am. Okay. And, and you and I share that in common. Um, you know, a lot of people would argue with me, but I was uh, raised by a Catholic mother who was pro-life, and uh, it was just put into me that abortion is murder, no matter how you put it, um, to each their own as far as their views. But I understand where you're coming from. I don't believe in abortion either. 
Um, and that's just the way I was raised. So I will not judge you on that. And hopefully others won't judge you on it either. So let's get back to Derek. Derek um, impregnated your child at the age of 11. She carried the baby. The baby is healthy. The baby is now four months old. Once you found out that he was the one sleeping with your child and who uh, obviously impregnated your child, uh, DSS became involved as well as the Spartanburg Sheriff's Office. And they're the ones that got the ball rolling on the DNA. They had to prove that the DNA was his before they could legally charge him, correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, between the time that your daughter became pregnant, the time that you found out she was pregnant, and the time that she had the baby, had you had any contact with Derek at all? No, ma'am. Okay, so you're saying that you all had already broke up at the time. Yes, ma'am. We had been separated long before I found out that she was pregnant. Okay, so you all had already separated. Was there a point where your daughter was referring to Derek as like her stepfather? Because, you know, people have screenshotted some things on Facebook and, you know. Yes, fo- ma'am. Okay, so she, she kind of looked at him as a father figure. Yes, ma'am. How is she taking all of this? Is she back in school? Uh, yes, ma'am, she is. And she is doing very well. She's handling everything so good. Uh, something that, uh, you know, typically young kids can't handle because it's a lot. Yeah. But uh, she has a very good support system and good, strong family that's been behind her 100 percent. And of course, I have been through her er, by her side through all this since it all started. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going nowhere. You know, I talk to my daughter. You can talk to your kids all the time about this kind of stuff. It's, it, it, in some cases, it's preventable. In some cases, it's not. So in this particular case, it was not preventable. You know, um, the fear that she had, she could not come to me and tell me because um, the intimidation that she was under. Right. So, you know, so I just want everybody to know that it can happen. It can happen. It can happen to anybody. anybody. Yeah. So when these activities were happening um, between, you know, your ex-boyfriend, Derek, and your daughter, where were you? Obviously, you weren't in the house. Were you working? Was he child sitting? I was at work. Okay. Every time I went to work. And when I was at home, there was no signs of uh, abnormal behavior between them two. Everything was kosher, you know what I'm saying, Uh, when, when I was home. We did stuff as a family with uh, all family members, right. other, uh, my other family members and his other family members and stuff like that. So the signs, the signs weren't there because the behavior, you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't expose uh, particular behavior mm-hmm. and anything like that. Because if I would have noticed that, then, you know, of, of, of course I would have, you know, jumped on it then and stuff. If you had to estimate how long you thought it was going on, what would you say? Uh, I couldn't even guess. (laughs) I'm not even going to lie because, like I said, everything's still fresh. Um, Everything's still coming out. Um, She is in therapy, and we have therapy sessions and stuff like that. So I'm not being negligent on anything. Right. I'm on my A game Mm -hmm. and everything like that, so... You know, I'm going through step by step with her yeah. through everything. And like I said, we have family that's been very supportive, been here beside us through everything. So to the people out here, because there are a lot of folks saying a lot of negative things, like, of course, where was the mom? (laughs) We answered that. The mom was at work. How long did you know this guy? I grew up with this guy. This is a childhood friend who I ended up dating. Why was he there with your child alone? Because he was child sitting and because you trusted the man, which this can happen in anybody's family, because I know people where it's happened with their own biological father who has molested or raped them. So this this is something that does happen and it can happen. But a lot of people are pointing the finger at mom saying well we need to look at the mom was she on drugs would you like to clear the record whether or not you've been on drugs or not i have never done drugs a day in my life i have a clean background okay i am a very um my child is my first child Mm -hmm. and no matter how much you try to protect your kids from anybody Mm -hmm. it just goes to show you that you can't protect them at all times right you know, you it, 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 it like you said, it it, it could have happened with uh, family members. Right. You know, I've seen it done to family members. I've personally went through the same experience. 
So I know. Mm-hmm. And kids, uh, kids, when people judge people, it puts people in a position where they're scared to say anything because they don't want to be, how can I put it? I can't really put it. Um, they're scared to voice their voice mm-hmm. because people are, are, are judging them. They want to point fingers. They want to, until you guys walk in a mother's shoes, mm-hmm. you guys will never know the pain, the hurt, anything that anybody went through. You're right. I mean, you never really know how you would deal with something and what you would observe or what you wouldn't observe until it has actually happened to you. And I was just telling a friend this a few days ago, and this isn't even in regards to this situation. I mean, you really never know how you'll react. Um, did you see his video yesterday that was live streamed on WSPA when he went to uh, his bail hearing? I did. It don't surprise me. So you're not surprised by his reaction at all? No. Because he's stuck, he can't get he, he he can't get out. He's stuck. He's caught. He knew me personally. He knew that he he he's done. He's he's done. You know what I'm saying? And he had his freedom, and now his freedom is gone. And he'll probably be locked up, probably for the rest of his life, if he's found guilty. And I'm gonna make sure of that. <laughs> Trust me and believe. What charges did they bring him up on? Um. I think they said criminal sexual conduct with a minor. Okay. Under the age of 11. Okay. And that's the um, big charge. Do you know what the uh, the penalty or what the maximum sentence would be for that? If I'm not mistaken, the judge said on TV that the maximum is, is 25 to life. So were there any statutory rape charges in the case? That's basically what that is. Okay. Okay. But just not... In those words. Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. Has his uh, family been in contact with you to offer their empathy or support or anything? Mm. <laughs> no, I I have no dealings with, with them. Okay. And moving forward, your daughter's child, a.k.a. your grandbaby, will have no, no dealings either? Or you think that's just going to be? No. I'm going to try to prevent it as much as I can right. if I have to do legal steps. Okay. And to be clear, you're you're a single mother, and now you're a single grandmother, too. I am. So I've been like that for 12, 12 years. 12 years. Did you ever at one point think that this young man, Derek, would be your husband? Uh, we were engaged for um, a month, a, a couple of months, and then things started going bad. So, you know, things happen and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, it's for the better that things uh, didn't work out between me and him. Yeah, obviously. And I didn't get married. But for people that were asking, yes, we were engaged and stuff like that, you know. And there are a lot of people that know us. Mm-hmm. So it's not something that I can hide behind, yeah. you know. And I'm not going to hide. I have to be a voice. I have to let other kids know that it's okay to tell your parents. Don't be scared to, to come to your parents and tell your parents what's going on. Right. It, like, it can happen to anybody. Absolutely. There was a picture somebody screenshot on Derek's Facebook page uh, where it says, stepdaughter wanted to go to Glendale Rocks, don't know how she talked me into it. And then it showed a little girl and him uh, walking, I guess, like in the woods. Is that your daughter there? Yeah, that's um, when we went to Glendale Show one time. And she was an itty bitty thing. Like she, there's, Mm -hmm. you know, like some of these 11 year olds out here and it's never justified. I'm going to say that before uh, I say what I'm going to say next. It's never justified. But, you know, some of these 11 year olds, including me when I was 11, you know, I had a 34 double D bra size. You know, I I had hips. I had a butt. You know, I used to wear makeup because I thought I was grown. So some of these 11 year olds appear to be, you know, teenagers or young women but your daughter, based on the pictures I've seen, she looked like a baby. She looked like a child. She looked like a 10 or an 11 year old. She was not all fancy looking like a grown woman. I, I agree because I don't I don't believe in makeup. I don't believe in kids dressing up to I don't dress provocative, nothing like that. So I wouldn't even let my daughter dress like that. Yeah. It's stuff, you know, I mean, different parents have different views and beliefs on stuff. I personally don't believe in that stuff. And it's for that reason, yeah. you know, because they're easy targets for 
creditors and stuff like that. And like a couple of people said, on the outside, you wouldn't know he was like that. Right. Only he knew, you know, because he didn't, he didn't portray anything like that. Everybody gets fooled. Everybody, you know, just learn from the mistakes that were done and you just roll with them. You go on and live your life and make the best out of it that you can. And that's what we have done. Absolutely. Well, you have my my support and empathy. Um, I thank you, you know, for for even taking the time to talk to me. I know it's not an easy thing, um, but I think it's important to give you a voice, too, because there is a lot of questions. There's a lot of bashing going on. You know, is there anything that we missed or anything that you want to touch on or anything you'd like to say to anybody listening? Because we got uh, hundreds of thousand people checking in via radio and also uh, via a Facebook live feed. Um, and of course, we, we did it all audio because we wanted to protect you and, and your likeliness. You know, we don't I know, you know, people and people know you, but we don't want the masses to know you. We want you to be able to go to church or we want you to be able to go to the grocery store and people not approach you. So is there anything that we missed or anything that you want to touch on before we, we wrap up today? No, not really. Just everybody just needs to, you know. Be prepared for things that happen. You know what I'm saying? They just need to. I can't even really explain it because everything that's been going on, my mind is like, yeah. I've been going through this for months. I've had to be quiet and my voice has not been heard. And it's been for legal purposes. And now that it's out, we're relieved and we can breathe. And my my, my daughter's not scared to go out no more. She can sleep at night Mm -hmm. and and mama can too. So I've had a lot of people come to me on Facebook uh, and tell me their stories and say that we've been an inspiration to them to voice their voice and let it be heard. Cause there's a lot of people out here that don't have nobody. They're alone or their parents don't believe them because because of certain situations or the parents choose the man over the child yeah. and in my case that's not my case i did what i had to do for my child i'm still doing what i need to do for my child and i'm going to continue to do what i need to do for my child and that's the way it's supposed to be you're supposed to support your children through any and everything because at the end of the day no one can ever change the fact that you're a mother and your child should always come first so i mean i commend your efforts of you know, taking that baby in and loving that baby, knowing the oh, circumstances. I bet she is. And I bet she's beautiful, too. I've seen a picture of your daughter and, you know, I'm sure she she made a beautiful baby. And is she really hands on mothering or are you kind of taking that role for her? We both. OK. I, I, it's a learning process for her. Yeah. You know, she's still a baby herself. Mm-hmm. So it's a learning process. I have, like I said, I have people that come in and out and help me do parenting classes with her to help her understand, you know, and I still let her be a kid. Right. Because I can't take her childhood away from her. No, you can't. She's still a baby. Yeah. I mean, she's she's 11 now or she's 12? She's 12. She's 12. Okay. So when she had the baby, was she 11 or 12? 12. But she was pregnant at age 11. Yes, ma'am. Prior to her being pregnant, obviously, she had already had her cycle. So I'm assuming you had had the talk with her a long time ago about how babies are made, where they come from, and all that good Oh, yeah. Okay. I even took her to the doctor because there was some irregular stuff going on. And, you know, the doctor, you know, I did everything. I took the step. It's not that I didn't notice that she wasn't getting her stuff. And doctors told me that it was normal because young girls at that age, they're irregular. Some start early Mm -hmm. and then stop and don't get it again until they're teenagers. So I took the necessary steps. So you did everything mom was supposed to do. You protected your child. You loved your child. And your word to anybody that has anything negative to say is this can happen to anybody at any time. And you're not the person to fault in this situation, nor well, is your child. I, I had to prove my innocence. Trust me, it took, it, it's been a long, tough road, but I had to prove. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of proving to do. And that's why I'm where I'm at now and why my kids are still with me. How many children do you have total, if you don't mind me asking? I have one. <laughs> I just, I, I call them my kids. It's, it's, it's a habit. Mm-hmm. Because 
He might be my grandbaby, but it's weird for me to say grandchild. <laughs> yeah, because you're 30. You have a, you're 30, and you have a grandbaby. Yeah, yeah, I can totally understand. You know, when, I'm still in my 30s myself. I'm a little bit older than you because I have a 21 year old. But um, I told my child, you know, uh, don't be making me no grandma in my 30s, and we good. <laughs> I, know, I know, right? <laughs> so, but you know what? You, you're doing the best you can, and I, I commend your effort and your support of your daughter and. You know, I just really hope this all works out. Do you plan on attending all of the the, the court hearings and trials and all I of do. that? I have no choice. Okay. Will your daughter be made to testify on the stand? Do you know at this point? Uh, I don't know at this point. I won't know until we reach that obstacle. Yeah. I would I would hope not, uh-huh. but you can't put it past. Right. Now, I, I had a couple people, um, just because this is all live, a couple people chiming in like, well, we still don't understand how you didn't know your daughter was pregnant. And again, you said it's because your daughter uh, is smaller. She has a slim build. And you just you didn't know until she was 26 weeks, which is like six and a half months. And again, uh-huh. as somebody that was pregnant at uh, age 16, I know I didn't start showing until seven months, maybe maybe six and a half, seven months. But I I have the pictures to prove it. I just look like a little thickum. So did you think she was gaining weight? Like how much weight did she actually gain during her pregnancy? Um, I forgot. Oh, I, I totally forgot with everything that I, we've been going through since February. It's been rough. It's hard to keep up with everything, but yeah. she is a thicker girl yeah. now due to having a baby. But back when she was 11 years old, like you said, she was a skinny little toothpick. Right. You know, and like I said before, girls that are slim build, I've seen it happen. They don't start, they don't show until just about they get ready to give birth, you right. know? So when, when it was brought to my attention, because the school brought it to my attention, because, you know, they know my daughter and, you know, stuff like that. And that's when I stepped in and took her to the doctors and made them do this and do that. And, you know, we took the steps from there. So, yeah. you know. So she wasn't having like morning sickness. Mm-mm. Wow. <laughs> she didn't know what was going on with her body. You know, she just thought it's, I'm growing. You know. Yeah. Or uh, my appetite because she was always the type that didn't hardly eat. Mm-hmm. She would eat, but she didn't have an appetite mm-hmm. until she got older. Oh, that's a tough one. Well, you know what? Again, I, I thank you for it's your time. Situ- it's a tough situation. I'm going to be honest with you. It hasn't been easy, and I know it gets worse before it gets better. Yes. But. We've made it this far. I'm not going to let people and their negativity bring me down. Right. You know, if anything, they 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 need to understand mm-hmm. the the situation before they judge somebody. But you can't you can't make people. People are going to have their opinions regardless. Let me ask you this: Are you a, are you a Christian woman? Or are you a God fearing, praying woman? I I am. I um I've recently started going to church because I've worked a lot. You know, being a single mom, I work a lot to, 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 just to provide for uh, my daughter and stuff. But I have leaned on him so many times. I've stayed up all night crying, begging mm-hmm. for answers. Yeah. And he came through. Well, good. Good. I'm glad that you're uh, definitely a God-seeking young lady and, you know, continue to pray, continue to seek his word. I know it's it's rough because, you know, you work a lot. You're a single mom. You know, one thing that I found easy is, uh, you know, you got the Bible app now. And even if you don't have time to read it, it will read to you. So, you know, continue <laughs> to seek uh, seek his word and his mercy and his grace and and all of that good stuff. And I, I absolutely wish you the best. And I'm going to definitely put you and your daughter in my prayers as well. I mean, I'm sorry that this happened, but you know what they say, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, wiser, and better. Exactly. So, you know, receive that and, 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 and do what you can do to be the best mother for your daughter as you continue to raise her through her teenage years. She's not even a teenager yet, but also that baby, you know what I'm saying? That baby, it's, it's, it's not going to be an easy journey, but you know, with the right support and love and, um, direction, I, I think that you'll be able to make it work for the best. I'm trying to. <laughs> it's, like I said, it's not been easy, but yeah. Well, you keep your head up and, and make the best of it. That's all you can do. And again, I thank you for your time today. I wish you the best, and please keep us updated as we get more information on on the charges and the and you know how everything starts to unfold. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks again, Miss Stone. I appreciate you checking in on the Kelly Mac Show. You're welcome. All right. You have a great day.